So I'm delighted to welcome Eleanor Tweddle today, uh, who's my guest for uh, this uh, LinkedIn Winning Through group interview, uh, which will go to broader audience later on. Um, and Eleanor and I have come to meet each other through a mutual friend. Um, and I was particularly interested in, in, in a marvellous uh, blog that uh, Eleanor wrote called Beyond the Mess, A Different Kind of Closing. So having created that intrigue, I'll, I'll let uh, Eleanor introduce herself and explain the relevance of that and then we'll go from there. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Yeah, Beyond the Mess. It's a bit of a funny title, but I guess I'm playing with the um, the concept of a mess, which is actually uh, where in military land we go and do sort of dine outs and events when they happen. Um, and it's kind of where, uh, I guess it's like the community centre equivalent for military. I'm probably going to get absolutely slated for saying it's a community centre, but <laughs> that's what a mess is. <laughs> So that's all sort of inspired by, um, I'm married to an um, army officer, so we're a military family, and the different kind of door closing was around me realising that actually in the last couple of years, I've had to say goodbye in lots of different ways when we move every two years, and I probably didn't realise that, so obviously another door is based on job loss, and that, you know, we've kind of swapped a lot of messages around that, but I didn't realize that actually moving, resetting, starting to network your business again, it's all forms of closure. So yeah, that's where the blog came from. And I just wrote into it really, if that makes sense. I just explored yeah. Yeah. how I was feeling about that particular door closing through my writing. So that's where that blog came from. Right. And yeah, and obviously, I mean, my particular interest is, as you say, this constant reinvention, which links to so much of what's going on at the moment. And obviously, all the um, stories we've heard from people of their struggles in lockdown, and obviously, people have lost their jobs um, before, during, or since. So, let's see how we can bring this all together mm -hmm. where your experiences may be um, uh, of constant uh, moving and, and reinvention can actually help other people with their mindset around how they can um, rethink their strategy moving forward. So let's rewind and um, um, go back to uh, when you were at Vodafone. How long ago was that now, Eleanor? Um, I think probably about four or five years mm -hmm. four, maybe four years yeah um yes we were based in wiltshire at that point and that's where i met fabulous gail <laughs> um and i worked for vodafone for a couple of years um and yeah it was fine you know i'd had corporate work in life for the last 23 years so i'd worked so what, what actually is your background eleanor yeah, so I was corporate comms. So right. I've been head of comms for Virgin Atlantic. Um, I work for Costa Coffee, RAC. So I've had good brands and Vodafone was um, a move which we made as a family. So um, yeah, it was kind of, you know, the right location for where we were at in Wiltshire. Um, but yeah, as these things happen, that's where the restructure happened and I got made redundant. From the role that I was in and that's when the search started what do I do next <laughs> so let's explore what 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 was this the first time you'd experienced redundancy and no I had got made redundant a few years before that um when it was actually called Norwich Union at the time when Aviva took over RAC yeah. there was lots of restructure and I was made redundant, but it was kind of more mutual at that point. So that redundancy was more, I didn't really want to stay. The role wasn't really, you know, it was that, it was that kind of conversation. Um, it was still hard because you're still putting yourself out of a job, but it felt a bit different. And I was young, free, single at that point. So 
you know, a bit freer with my thoughts, where I could live, how I could live, that kind of thing. So a little bit different. Whereas the next redundancy was more poignant because it was a moment in time in your life when you just feel like you're settling into a role that I was really enjoying. I was really loving the job. Um, and we had plans, we had family plans and it was all, you know, great. And then suddenly it's the taken out of control and somebody else has a different opinion on that. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's why it hit me differently. The right. second. So what did you learn from that experience then, Eleanor? Yeah, so what, um, what I remember doing, the very first thing I did was like probably everyone does. I'm not sure I panicked, but I certainly went into action mode very quickly right. and just got applying for any job in the whole world ever that looked yeah. vaguely yeah. like something yeah. I could possibly do. I just went on that amazing, you know, like you're playing sort of Pac-Man or something, just press that button, apply, apply sign up to indeed sign up to every recruitment agency what um, the scattergun approach absolutely that's exactly <laughs> what i did yeah and it was over christmas and into the new year so not the best time either um and of course inevitable when you do that what started coming back was rejection 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 <laughs> and it starts pushing you down 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 and then you're like yeah. oh my god yeah so that's the very first thing i did so that is not what obviously is recommended at all but i think that's the natural response isn't it and then flight i or, just what they say flight or fight response. Ex exactly yeah very relevant <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so then you gotta sort of just stop yourself and i think i managed to stop myself at a point when i'd gone for an interview i'd actually managed to get an interview and it was a really good job it was, a, it was a promotion. I'd managed to upgrade, managed to get in the seat in front of this really great guy. Loved the job, loved the title, money, everything. And I thought, ooh. And I got out driving back home. And I just had this overwhelming feeling of, yeah, but I don't want it. I just don't want it. And I just couldn't get my head around like, yeah, but it's perfect. But I don't want it. And so, yeah, I took, I took, here probably a week i mean i'm not taking loads of time out here because you know we're a family by now we need money you know it's got to that's kind of driving your thoughts so um well, well, I, I, mean, I can totally relate to this because i i did yeah. exactly the same thing did you? <laughs> I, I, and I had a sit oh, this, oh, this is stage of view i mean i can picture the person in front of me and he said steve oh if it was up to me i'd recruit you now i think you're perfect for this job um and i got really excited and then i drove away and i thought what am i doing here <laughs> it's, 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 that's it's amazing not, it's not me yeah it was a real one one of those sort of career and life defining moments um fascinating so but what was it yeah. that was what was the voice in your head what was what what was it saying yeah well, i'm gonna I, maybe i can ask you because i have no idea it's just the weirdest feeling isn't it yeah especially when you've been doing that corporate role for so long you know i've been in corporate for 23 years that was what i knew it's comfort zone so that was very odd and to be honest i'm not even sure what was saying it was just uncomfortable i was just like oh i just feel so unmotivated and excited and i think that that it was more feeling yeah of getting home and thinking I should be buzzing right now. Like, I feel yeah. like I'm about to be offered a cool, amazing job. And I'm just like, oh man, yeah. really? So yeah, I have to take I think this time out a, to think about it. I think that's a really great point, uh, Eleanor, for people watching this, because it can be incredibly flattering, can't it? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, you, and you, you've got the world, it's your oyster, so to speak. And if it doesn't feel right, if that gut feeling is saying, well, no, hang on a minute, um, maybe my corporate time is, is over, um, then it's, it could be out the frying pan into the fire, couldn't it? It's really hard, isn't it, Steve? And I, I think at the moment with, I mean, it's never easy um, at all, but with every, everything surrounding you at the moment with the negative headlines, it's bound to be, it's compounding that as well that feeling of i've just got to take this and be grateful yeah. um but 
I still feel like you can apply the same thoughts as, as what we, we've kind of gone through, which is you've got to really think, be true to yourself and say, but what do I need right now? And yeah. if it was yeah. money, so if you're absolutely, of course, I, I need to pay the mortgage, I need to pay the bill, I've got a job there, I've got to do this, I would have taken the job, but I probably would have still worked on this, but what, what's going on in the background here? Maybe I can yeah. start a side yeah. project or an interest or something like that, yeah, that moves me right. further into that place in a longer term goal. Yeah. So it started off something that I'd never thought of before, which is longer term goals. I think I just drifted through corporate. Um, I definitely didn't have like a career plan. Um, I didn't have like, oh, in five years time, I wanna rule the world or anything like that. <laughs> Um, so suddenly I think it was more that feeling um, I didn't need the money straight away so I was in a position where I didn't need it straight away I'd done my numbers and I yeah. knew that it was actually three months time I needed to start earning money well I, I, I just so, there for a sec. I think it's such an important point again um, yeah and it's something I learned in my um, redundancy and transition period to do what I would call a survival budget is so important and most people have never done one until they yeah. get to that point but to know how long you can go until the money runs out or until you don't want to dip into savings or whatever is really really important because that that will be a a great motivator or demotivator <laughs> whichever way you look at it it certainly yeah. be a driver won't it totally it, and it, it almost is the fuel you need once you've done that and you know you've got a target and a goal you can work really hard to that and that, i think that's why i've sort of allowed myself a week of just kind of like okay to stop applying for stuff and panicking and like just but what stop. did you do then so i think i think <laughs> the first thing i did was nothing <laughs> in that moment in time i just was exhausted and i think you underestimate the emotions you gone through yeah and as i said i i got made redundant from a job i was really enjoying and it was kind of yeah it was it was awkward i felt like well, well what's just happened i was doing re i thought i was doing really well i'd built this cool cool team i was enjoying working with i was really looking forward to the next plans that were coming through all of that stuff and suddenly it's gone like literally you're not needed and the next day gone so i think you you do need that time but instead of giving yourself that downtime you just fill it as i did with you know other stuff that you think right i've got to quickly get on the phone to the recruitment agency and get going on this so doing nothing <laughs> was the first thing i did which was ironic and i meant i mean that i meant i went walking i didn't look at my laptop once in that week i it, just it's just, that. That, it's allowing yourself just yeah. just just to be isn't it and yeah. you say you went walking and so on, but it's remarkable because I, I, you know, for years I've encouraged people when they're in this situation, whatever you do, um, exercise. All right, if you've got a gym membership and it's expensive, mm -hmm. you might want to uh, pause that. But you know, just go out, walk, cycle, do stuff that costs nothing. Um, but replenish the mind, basically. I think that's the most important thing, isn't it? And, and, yeah. and stay healthy yeah you just don't realize that that's all part of you building your comeback plan <laughs> you well, know let's, let's, let's look part, at that. so <laughs> how do you relate what i'm really interested in Ellen, is how do you relate that experience to your constant having to um up uh, uproot and then resettle and reinvent yourself yeah and um i'd like to say that i'm used to it but I, i'm not a lot of people say that when you're moving all the time you know we must get used to it well i don't know if you can get used to it because you what are you getting used to like every time you're moving into a new place new community new ways of work all this all this stuff um but that but must you're have right. affected your ability to apply for jobs in itself surely that's it yeah and i think that was maybe the moment in time when i thought right and my daughter was getting older into school so you know when she's at nursery and things and she's little it was a bit easier to move around and then once she gets to primary school then you think well i've got to start settling or try to find things that are a bit more steady so there's more factors that start coming into it for sure 
So I think it's more like applying this, okay, I need to feel like I'm more in control of how I'm earning money, what I'm doing. I need to feel like I can work with it. And so that was the sense that I started getting about what I wanted to move towards in the long term. But um, all the time realizing that, yeah, but in the short term, you're going to have to kind of just get something. So in the end, uh, when we moved, because we moved a little bit after the redundancy, we moved a couple of months after that, when we moved to Bristol, um, I got a contract and I did freelancing work. So I kept myself sort of free. I didn't go down the permanent route. Started kind of one dip in the ocean of sort of business, setting up a business, working that all out. Um, and kept really sort of comfortable with what I was doing in terms of earning money. So kept doing the corporate comms, did all sorts of projects for people that I knew. I just sort of reached out and said, look, you know, I'm available to help you with brand or change management or writing or whatever got a little bit of work in and then when i finally got that up and running went a little bit crazy and set up an online store <laughs> as, so, you do. <laughs> as you do i just felt like no this is you know you're not pushing you're not kind of like you really wanted to do something different do something different so i set up this online store called snuggle truffle which was all like beach towels and throws and things like that i don't ask me how how why where i don't know i don't know what happened <laughs> i just did it <laughs> i just felt like i had to explore something and i was almost boring myself with what i was kind of playing around with so yeah i started doing like a market stall was like the first small step test it see if i liked it loved it but realized the money wasn't going to come in to you know get to cover bills um You're talking about so yeah, an actual in a in a market not online yeah i went the first one was a market stall yeah yeah right because it's actually really easy when you know when they get back up and running it, it's a great place to test a product you know yeah. you can i think the table was like 10 quid i just had a couple of products um samples and just people came and chatted about them and i said if you know took their order basically some people bought straight from it but i took an order and it's a safe way to sort of start a product business yeah um, no, i got no, lots wrong in that. the next year but you know yeah i got i way over ordered different stuff you know and completely but great way to sort of explore running a business and that's yeah. one of the things i just wanted to be doing something different and the drive to kind of so this was uh, really dipping your toe in the water yeah that's exactly it yeah that's exactly it so um and then i think when we moved again so again we had to sort of reset again by that point i'd been scribbling ideas about um the blog around being made redundant and how do you find your next step and what do you do next and exploring how you feel about it i didn't really feel like there's any support out there or i didn't really know where to go like i didn't really understand small business networks or you know how, how do you start a business so i just started writing all sorts of blogs about how i was feeling what support i was looking for putting it out on linkedin and people responded to it so that's sort of where another door started which was just the blog me writing working it all out in front of everyone i guess <laughs> um yeah, so yeah the next time that we moved that was more again what i was sort of reverting to but a great vehicle to put it in front of because you know the uh, in terms of professional business audience yeah definitely and it's about just getting over yourself a little bit and being brave and just going oh, what have i got to lose i think i stayed in the safe spot of but what if i post on linkedin and everyone thinks i'm crazy and i've done this and i've done that and what if i so nobody what? cares yeah. yeah exactly no one cares get on with it just in, yeah. you know explore so after about six months of hesitating and thinking oh, what if i change things and i completely undo all of that great work i've done and i never get a job again and what if this fails and i have to go back to permanent job and how embarrassing you know all of that stuff i just thought oh who cares just get on with it so um yeah i definitely lived in that space but it wasn't easy because when we moved again um i would i couldn't find work for six months just underestimated the move underestimated how much emotion i had been feeling from getting made redundant moving when to start up you know all of this stuff built up and built up 
and I just couldn't connect and, and get my head around pitching. It's a bit like a pressure cooker, isn't it? Yeah, it was hard. It was really hard. So yeah, again, I'm out of work again. And this time there's no money back up. I've, that's all gone. Um, digged into savings. That's all kind of disappearing. The business account disappeared. Everything was disappearing with no backup. Um, and I tell this story and then people say, well, yeah, but you had a husband, so I don't know what you're worrying about. That's completely, you know, judgmental. You haven't, there's not, you know, have a husband, what? <laughs> that doesn't mean anything these days. Like I'm an independent person who've got my really? own goals, how I work, what my, you know, my self-esteem. So yeah, I find that comment very odd, but it's happened to me quite a few times when I'm describing this. Like people oh, I, are like, I, I can understand that because for a lot of people, they think, well, you're all right. You've got a safety net. Your husband's got a good job in the military, so you're okay. But that doesn't meet your um, um, emotional and general life needs, does it? Absolutely. Or financial, because we'd only been together a few years and um, I had my own house that I was paying for still. I had my own bills that, you know, from years of living on my own. You know, it's very personal things, very Absolutely. judgmental yeah. things for yeah. people to say. So, yeah, I definitely still had that drive that I needed to sort this out. And, um, and that's where the book was born, because I just couldn't find my way around it. And I was in Portsmouth at the time. I found a, um, a sort of a, a place where it's like a co-working space. We had a desk in Portsmouth, yeah. um, hoping to network and get some work out of it, which I didn't. But I, I started writing the book and just thought, all right, I've got to do something that I'm enjoying, that I'm connecting with. And I start, when that started coming together, like do something I feel I can connect with and enjoy whilst I'm still on the lookout. So, what, yeah, what, that was... The book is um, Why Losing Your Job Could Be the Best Thing That Ever Happened to You. That catchy title. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's winning through redundancy. It's a lot yeah. easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was about the, the blog to me. I mean, it's the blog essentially uh, pulled together as, as a book, but it was about me exploring all of that and being really honest about it's not, yeah having an idea and it all coming together tomorrow, it might not happen. The best thing that can happen isn't about you setting up a multi-million pound business the next day and, oh, wasn't that brilliant? You know, I, got, I lost my job, but look at me now. It's not that. It's about just trying to find a bit more alignment to what you're doing, trying to be a bit more at peace with yourself. And as you mentioned before, your mindset, working on that, giving yourself a bit of time to work on you because therefore if you do find a job you can punch harder in that space you know if yeah. you've worked on you you're going to stand out aren't you you're going to be that person at the interview that people are like whoa I need this that's person. an important point and, uh, yeah. um, you know i've been running a number of webinars through the summer and yeah. um, um the amount of people i i've had to suggest that they need to start putting themselves first because most people are used to taking a back seat, especially if they've got a family like you and, you know, the kids come first and so on. But when you're in this situation, you, you, you've got to put yourself out there and suddenly think, well, hang on a minute. You know, I don't mean in a selfish way, but, mm. you know, I, I, I'm, I've got to look after number one. Um, mm. And unless you really do put yourself out there and, and, and make an effort to get noticed, then you're going to get lost in the ether, aren't you? Yeah. And I think you're right. We feel a bit guilty about that, you know, making ourselves number one. But what good are you to anybody if you're exhausted and overwhelmed yep. and burnt out? You're no good to anybody at all. I think um, it's the key word, and the guilt. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but um, I think women suffer from this more than men, especially mums. Um, you know, there is this real guilt factor that I shouldn't be doing this. Um, I shouldn't be putting myself above everybody else. But, you know, you you probably know this from coaching in terms of, um, you, you know, there's this expression, you have to give yourself permission. Mm. It's true, isn't it? You have to give yourself permission to say, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's all right. I need to do this. And it's only, it's not forever, is it? 
absolutely and it, it it does make you a better person for everybody around and then suddenly you see like what i started seeing was other people around me being interested and they wanted to sort of go what are you doing like you know it's that ripple effect of yeah. um coaching and and you know meditating things like that sometimes i mean in corporate life i was not that person i'd be like what can we just get on with work <laughs> i ain't got time for that and suddenly you sort of realize that if you do work on yourself there is a mindset problem that you're probably wrestling with we've all got it if you start working on that and really understanding why am i stopping myself why what's my self-belief what's the little chimp inside me telling me today you know the good old chimp paradox but you know things like that really can change your whole life and people see it and then they're curious and they're like what are you doing and you can start sort of sharing it and it's an amazing ripple effect that if you just yeah. take that step yeah. it, it's powerful isn't it yeah no i i, I couldn't agree more um so you started writing the book and then what happened <laughs> So yeah, in the in a cupboard in Portsmouth uh, <laughs> innovation space, <laughs> um, I thought let's do this. And in these this day and age, these things kind of happen sometimes. An advert or a po Facebook post popped up with a book coach. She was sort of saying that she's running this program to get your book done in six months, or she'd work with you to get it in a position. And I thought know what one i need a bit of support like i'm on my own here i've got nobody to sort of draw on so that might be quite good anyway but two yeah let's do this you know if you're going to mess about every day for an hour doing this thing let's do it seriously let's put some effort into this so um i signed up at, at a moment in time when i really shouldn't have probably signed up and was that karen william no that was no because um she i met her afterwards right. it was an online in Lee, which was more London based, like an online. Right. Uh, yeah, I, met, I met Karen after that. Um, but yeah, Jessica and I worked together online um, for the six months. And then eventually she said, Right, um, I'm actually an agent as well. Um, I've got an agent, book agency. Shall we pitch? Let's just go and see what happens. Do you, what do you fancy? And because by that point I was in this flow mode of like you know take work when it comes explore options get curious meet random people have a chat with you know like just say hey, what the hell let's just do this I have no idea why or what I was like yeah why not nothing to lose so she did that and then yeah she got the, the book deal so it's just one of those things about being curious being open-minded no expectations about it at all see what happens and and it all kind of yeah came came together and, and where are you at with the book now Emma? yes it's out in november so it was are kind you? of written last year but so it's a little bit weird because it's not quite aligned to where everyone's at right now there's a lot of references to going to meet people for coffee and things like that <laughs> <laughs> back in the day but you know it's obviously still relevant like yours you know it will be a help hopefully to people who uh, need a bit of hope they've lost their job what what do you need you need a bit of hope that this yeah. is going to be all right. yeah well that's what a lot of people said uh with my book i mean i never yeah. sort of thought of it in that way but the term that kept coming up and i'm sure yours would be the same and that is um providing practical hope yeah definitely. because it's got to be practical as well and so uh, you know, it's a great story, and, and and where you are, where you at now, work-wise, then? Yeah. So um, after all that was all going on, um, I kept contracting. Um, I managed to get a good contract with um, Channel Four, which was brilliant. So one of the beliefs I had, and this is probably a good thing for people listening as well, like I had a belief that I couldn't get a contract or any sort of project work apart from local so i localized myself to just like portsmouth that was it right I closed right. down any other options coming in and then that because i thought well i've got to drop off i've got you know my husband's working he's always away i've got you know i can't do anything other than drop off a child pick up my child you know that's it and then i got a contract I've got some work working for a company just a little bit outside southampton which i had to then start thinking well how do i do this and I managed to find a way. 
And then another contract came from Channel 4 in London and thought, of course I can find a way. I can find, of course I'm going to find a way to do this contract. So yeah, I found a way. And that's the thing is you think that, well, I can't do that because of this. But suddenly you manage to find solutions if you really want it. And of course, I'm going to go and work for Channel 4 for a while. So I contracted for them for a but bit. It's a great, <laughs> um, sorry to interrupt. There's a great no. quote by uh, Sir Richard Branson, which you may have come across. Uh, he, he, he talks about, you know, think like an entrepreneur. And he says, if somebody offers you an opportunity, say yes, and then work out how you can do it. Yes. It's exactly what you've done there. Yeah. And it sounds ridiculously obvious, doesn't it? But you don't. You shut barriers down yeah. and you can yeah. think, well, no, I've got to do this. I've got to, this is who I am. I can't do that. And of course, um, the, the irony yeah. now is in, in, in this awful COVID era, uh, it doesn't matter where the company is, does it? Yeah. Because it's all <laughs> yeah. done virtually anyway. That's the whole thing, isn't it? We're in a whole different world now. But um, exactly. Um, but it's again, it's mindset, like what you said right at the beginning, it's getting your head around, like, I can do this. I'm going to attract something amazing for me. I'm opening up. I'm going to find a way to get this done. And But you have to work on that energy because if you're exhausted, you're tired, you're panicked, you're not going to attract that at all. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, right. um, yeah, so I was at the beginning of this year, that was great. So I had a couple of contracts in London, a few different projects going on, actually. But like everyone, hit March, April time, the contracts ended. I was kind of done. And then that was it. So yet again, third time in four years, no work coming in. I'm thinking, oh God, here we go again. Oh my God. But I thought, right, let's just go all in. And um, another door had been sort of brewing with me and a partner had been running pr programs and workshops the year before and at the beginning of the year. But, you know, just little businesses, little workshops about changing career and things like that. We we're sort of playing with the idea. And I just said to her, what have we got to lose just to go all in? And we pitched for some outplacement contracts. We started creating a program online that was the same as the workshop that we'd been running. Um, so we just started slowly growing the business. But like what we said before we, we were uh, chatting, you know, it's not, still not easy because everybody's concerned about money everybody's a little bit you know hesitant to so god put in the work like i'm working my ass off like you know 12 hours a day pitch 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 get yourself out there do this work so it's not easy but the difference is i'm just enjoying it like i'm just you know it's that it's a bit cliche but you don't really begrudge the work because you enjoy it so when i like what you do steve like when you jump on a call with someone and they're not in a great place the one thing i know i can do is just give them that bit of hope like by the end of it they'll be feeling a little bit better a little bit different or yeah. they'll go through yeah. another door program and they'll get that idea they'll have that confidence to go off and do it and that's what kind of keeps you going really um so yeah there's a big difference i think from how i approach things now to all those years ago when i was scrabbling about oh, kind I mean, of working uh, it's a great story so what would you say to people then, Ellen? I'll just try and sort of summarise all this um, in terms of, you know, people who've had the rug pulled from underneath them and they can't see the wood for the trees, or what I would call stuck in the career transition maze, who are thinking, you know, the end of the world's come as we know it. What, what would you be saying to them? Yeah, a couple of things, I guess. The first thing is... Um yeah embrace that shock and don't underestimate you've got to just yourself, like what we said you're allowed to take a bit little bit of time even if you are under pressure to start earning quickly you've got to recharge it's like a, your battery on the phone it's gone down do the little recharge and then you'll punch harder when you when you go for it even if it's just a week that's fine but do that recharge and then um put in your mind that do you know what there's loads of opportunity out there you know people are spending money people have money people are still in jobs and they need you to do something to help them so really start to think about if your line of work isn't really there at the moment or anymore it might have gone rethink about who you are and reinvent what that could be 
Um, and again, like, I guess you have loads of examples of this. I, work, I, I was speaking to someone a couple of months ago and it just sticks in my head as like amazing. He lost his job a couple of months ago. We were chatting and he was like, oh, I'm gonna go and help my neighbors with the garden, um, just mow the lawn, blah, blah, blah. Next time I chatted, I'm really loving this gardening thing. Like he's gone from senior management, now he's mowing lawn. He's like, I, I think I'm gonna train to be landscape garden. I love it. So I didn't know, but I love it. And I, he's I now like that as well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's got, this whole six months has been this story. So it's the message is be curious, go with it. Who cares what your job title was? You, you know, you're not a job title. You're you with all your strengths, all your amazing skills that somebody needs, whoever you are. I don't believe this is a class thing. Or, you know, what the hell is class anyway? It, it's nothing like that. It's a person being useful to someone and you can do it and you can just get out there and reinvent. Um, but to do that, you've got to have the energy. So yeah. build, yeah. you know, make yourself strong put yourself in a confident position and then go for it and just go for it you know get curious be brave do things that feel a bit uncomfortable and see what happens yeah brilliant I, I, one of my sayings um, is success goes where your positive energy flows which i think encapsulates what you said yeah, but, I love that. but also there was a wonderful story which you might see um about the um uh, a guy who was um, a senior director, I think it was British Aerospace, and he was an early casualty of the COVID crisis. And um, uh, next thing, he's uh, become a uh, delivery driver for somebody like Asda. Yeah. And he put out a post on, I think it was on LinkedIn, about how much he was loving the job. <laughs> And he saw he was making a difference to people's lives. The fact that he was able to <clears throat> deliver food to them at, at such a challenging time. Yeah. So he completely reframed his whole thought process. Again, back back to mindset. And, yeah. and, he, and he started, uh, the, the sort of the twist was that he was thinking, I've had a stressful existence for God knows how many years. <laughs> Why didn't I think about doing something less stressful earlier on? <laughs> um, but unfortunately, that's life, isn't it? Yeah, well, we get busy, don't we? We love a good busyness. Yeah. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? We've been so busy with our inbox and our PowerPoint slides and our this and our that and all the stuff that we think has mattered. And then you get made redundant and the next day, none of that matters. And suddenly you're like, what have I been filling my time with? And it puts it in perspective. You know, it kind of makes you think, what should I have been doing? Like, mm. who, you know, and, what, and as you said, I want to do that. you're not defined by your job title. Mm. You know, so many people say, I am an ex. I am. You're not an <laughs> ex, you're a human being. So yeah. finally, um, before we, we started the interview, you talked about <laughs> constantly pressing the reset button, which I yeah. love. <laughs> Just share what that means to you uh, and, uh, and how, how that mindset can help other people through these challenging times. Yeah, I should have it, shouldn't I? I think I should draw a big reset. Let's press that reset button. It could be a, a great image. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Um, don't give me any more ideas. <laughs> that I um, no, it's great. But I think that image in your head really does help people that because you just feel like you're still going and going and pushing through. Whereas if you pause and you're recharging, it's that notion of recharge. And then you can just go, OK, I'm resetting this now. And that whole feeling of what happens when you reset, it goes back to the start. It's your, almost your default and then you rebuild. And if you start to feel like, okay, I've got no baggage, I've got no expectations of what's about to happen, I'm completely an open book here, I'm gonna just go for curiosity and find my way around what happens and what comes to me. You've got to put stuff out there, it's not gonna, if you just sit in there, it's not gonna do anything. You've got to start posting, you've got to start telling people what you're thinking. But taking the steps is that reset and then being open to what comes from it and saying, yeah, why not? I'll have a go at that. Or seeing stuff, seeing the delivery driver, actually that's an interesting life, seeing that garden yeah. that needs more. Yeah. You know, why not 
explore and you can then develop it from that it's not defining you i think people feel worried about yeah what would it look like on my cv what would it look like on linkedin yeah. no one cares yeah. nobody yeah. cares yeah. yeah you know couldn't agree more yeah so just get curious and press the reset button and open up to see you know actually 2021 could be an amazing year for reinvention people still need stuff to do they still need your service so reinvent it rethink how you do it it could be a great year for you yeah well what a fabulous way to end uh, this interview <laughs> so thank you ever so much and it's been a real pleasure and uh, I'll, i wish you well with uh, constant resetting <laughs> <laughs> and of course uh, the book thank you steve and thanks very much for having me no, it's brilliant.